Welcome to the immersive exploration of Northern Vietnam. We're taking you on a journey through the countryside of one of the world's most historically rich and fascinating countries. Starting off in the mountains and valleys of Sapa, where we had the pleasure of trekking through the emerald rice terraces, understanding the way of life of the local tribes, my stronger. <laughs> and uncovering the deep roots placed here in the mountains. Followed by a trip to the ancient capital of Vietnam, Ninh Bình, where we transported ourselves back in time to understand the vast history. Not as easy as it looks. No. Get acquainted with the intriguing and unique beauty of the limestone cliffs. This is paradise. Beautiful people and uncovering why Vietnam has left its mark on millions of people all over the world. This is Northern Vietnam. And we start our journey today about 380 kilometers northwest of Hanoi, right close to the Chinese border in this beautiful town of Sa Pa. Welcome to the jewel of northern Vietnam. <laughs> Hello! <laughs> we are about to commence on a really exciting trek through northern Vietnam, starting right here in Sa Pa. Which is one of the most northwestern towns here in Vietnam. And we're actually just exploring the town before we head into the villages to start trekking. Sa Pa is a beautiful, quaint little town and it's covered with French colonial architecture and beautiful old style buildings. It's so crazy because now Northern Vietnam is now reminding me of Nepal because I'm just seeing all the little stores, the clothing shops, the trekking shops. I've got a, an immediate feeling like, whoa, this is so similar to Nepal. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> This area of Vietnam is very popular because of the mountain range that surrounds it. And you can see by all the buses, vans, taxis, limousines that are coming through here. So many people come to this part of Vietnam to go trekking and that's exactly what we're going to do today. Here is our lovely guide Sue. We're so lucky to have her with us because she's going to be guiding us along the way. We got between a three to five hour trek to a homestay where we will be camping out tonight. We're literally going to walk straight out of the town into the mountains. So this will give you an idea. Here is the town, but this is the valley and the mountains around, and that's where we're going trekking. After just a few minutes, we're already making our way out the town. And on this side, you can see I've got the mountain above me, but on this side, all the way down is the valley. So today we're going trekking, not up, but down, we are heading further down into the valley and that's where some of the tribes and the villages are. We are starting our trek today at an elevation of 1,500 meters. So I'm interested to see what the elevation is like when we go all the way back down into the valley. Now we're heading off the main road into the trekking. We had tar road the whole way for about 10 minutes and now this is where the real stuff begins. <laughs> So now it begins, we go all the way down. And I think it's about to take us maybe between three to five hours. And I can't help but think about how this reminds me of trekking to Everest Base Camp in Nepal because the scenery is so beautiful. You can already immerse yourself in this place and it's just special. The only difference is the weather is much, much better here. And as you can see, the yellow jackets have returned. Oh yeah. <laughs> They've returned. If you see us in yellow jackets, you know that we're about to go on an adventure. <laughs> hello! 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 So cute! That's it. After five minutes of trekking, the yellow jackets are coming off. Even though they're here with us on the adventure, whew, it's hot. We're already starting to see the magnificent rolling hills. There's some clouds coming in and we've got some amazing local people with us. It's a heart! Yes. <laughs> 
so beautiful. I love it. What's the craziest thing that you've ever done while traveling? I'll go first. This year alone, we've trekked to Mount Everest Base Camp. We've eaten scorpions and we've motorbiked to Northern Vietnam with no training whatsoever. Now imagine doing all of that with no health insurance. We wanted to thank Safety Wing for partnering with us on this video. And as we do some crazy things on this channel, getting sick happens more often than we realize. We are coming up to the end of our fourth year of full-time travel. And in that entire time, we have been insured through Safety Wing. Not only is Safety Wing the most affordable and reliable travel medical insurance, but they're also 100% online, covering us while we're on the go. For things such as accidents, getting sick, ambulance and emergency transportation, lost luggage, or an unplanned overnight stay. Safety Wing is available in over 175 countries, so our location can keep changing, but our insurance stays the same. Whether you're a long-term traveler like us, or you're going on weekend getaways, we highly recommend Safety Wing as your travel medical insurance. To find out more, just click the link in the description below. I want you to meet our amazing guide, Sue. She is going to be guiding us along the way today, and she is from the Black Hamong tribe. Yes. yes? Black Hamong community. Yeah, yes. community. Yes, yes exactly. Yeah. Can you tell us more about your outfit? Every local here in the village, we are so right like traditional dress. So that's why we traditional track, we might buy from the hand stitching. <laughs> Yellow, green, paint and print together. Wow. So that's why we need to paint a lot of time to make it. I love it. Yes. It's so beautiful. Yeah, buy from wedding, uh -huh. pea party and happy new year. Oh wow, yes. so special and occasions. Yes, <laughs> we also know how to know to make a traditional You have to know how to make yes. it as well. Yeah, wow. we are a girl. Mm -hmm. We are ready now to make it almost six years, seven years. Wow. We start how now to learn. Thank you for yes. explaining. Okay, it's not problem. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you. What's your name? Uh, Deb. Deb. Yes. Very yes. good. What is your name? Chili. Chili? Yeah. I like your name. Thank you. Are you? Uh, my name is Chev. Chef. Oh, yes. Good. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Hello. What's your name? My name is Gang. Nice to meet you. Yes. I love your outfit and your bag. So beautiful. This region is known specifically because they have many diverse communities and ethnic groups, but also they're very well known for their rice plantation. The black Hamong people try to live in here. So there are more people here, they're just working in the farmer. So you can see all the way down into this valley, there are rice terraces on pretty much every mountain. This time of year, they've already harvested. So it's not as green and lush as it normally is during the summer. So all the water is now sitting in those rice fields and apparently they want to keep the water in for as long as possible so that way they can have really wet and moist soil so they can harvest again next year. We don't see rice view but we will see that the rice step. Yes cabin. the steps yes. but it's more green and brown. Yes uh -huh. it's more green and brown. And I've never seen this before where you have all the terraces carved out. It looks like the mountain is a giant cake that's just been cut absolutely perfectly and we were told that everything is done completely by hand no machines. These rice terraces are just a sight to see. They look like they're cascading down the mountain, kind of like a waterfall effect. And to think that they're doing everything by hand is incredible. How are they cutting everything absolutely perfectly? This is a bit of a muddy journey that we're going on here. I think one step in and that could be a problem for these shoes. One wrong move and... One wrong move. I think it's super, super steep down there. And if you make one mistake, Bye shoes. Luckily, we've got good weather today. The trail is quite dry. It's not too muddy or rainy. Look at the view. Oh, there's a buffalo. Look. Wow, look at the buffalo right here. Look at the buffalo. Buffalo, chicken, everything. Hello. Hey guys, having lunch. Not a bad place to have lunch. I can't believe we get to do this. We're actually getting to talk firsthand with the Black Hamong communities and the Red Zhao communities. And that is just absolutely spectacular. Oh, hello. 
I'm so happy that we have decided to do Northern Vietnam as season two of our Vietnam series because last time we did a lot in a short amount of time but this trip feels different it feels like we're really appreciating where we are and of course we're going on a normal Chevendev style adventure so we don't know what we're up for but we're gonna have fun regardless <laughs> and that's my kind of adventure If you're wondering how I'm doing pace-wise, not too bad actually. Legs are fine, feet are fine. We don't really have trekking shoes. Can you believe that we're in like Sapa, northern, northern Vietnam? Like we're on the border of China right now. What a place. Like, can you believe this kind of place exists in the world? I mean, the rice terraces, they look so magnificent. Like they've been carved from the gods and this is all natural. We have just stopped now pretty much at the top of a hill and I can hear the flowing river right down there. Can't see very much. Oh, that looks great. Sorry, I'm not gonna... <laughs> He's trying to focus and I'm like, oh, look at this. <laughs> I wanted to mention that Sapa was almost not going to make it onto our list for season two and that's just because we thought it was a little bit further away and we didn't know much about it but I want to say a huge thanks to Vietnam Escape Tours because they actually recommended an authentic local experience for us to try out and after arriving here I can just say wow this place is probably one of the most unique places I've ever visited often when you come to Vietnam maybe there's a lot of touristy things that you can do but as you can see there's nobody here here and we're definitely getting an authentic experience so huge shout out to you guys Vietnam escape tours thank you <laughs> we're actually going downhill now the knees are taking a bit of a beating I wonder what's happening why am I out of breath probably all those bun knees are we going down here oh and you got a doggo friend with you oh he's coming with the strangest cutest whitest fluffiest doggo is coming with us He's right behind you. He's literally coming with us into the depths of the jungle. Where am I? <laughs> so we're walking along this beautiful bridge here because we actually have to cross this river that's running and snaking through this valley. And you can just see how the rice fields are cut literally from the top of the mountain all the way down to the river. It's one of the most beautiful backdrops. It probably looks like a green screen. Buffalo. You see buffalo? Oh my goodness. Ducks are swimming in the rice terrace. What did you say, Sue? I said free shower <laughs> the rice paddy. Yes, yes, so cute. The motor going home. Are you going home after yes. your shower? This is how they make the hem? Yes. Like your clothes? Yeah. yeah. So what you you how you make it? Yeah. Okay. So we were cutting this one, and then we dive from the indigo. You see? Everything is by the hand, huh? everything by hand yes. as soon as they've done weaving it they then bring it here there is indigo in this barrel we dye from here and then they use that as dye different color right this we don't dye yes we dye from the indigo you see and this is the indigo it's from the indigo Whoa. indigo part of water and i can see your hands yes. i've got indigo got indigo Yay. as we're walking it's almost 5 pm and the sun is starting to dip it's getting a little bit cooler but we're making our way through all of these different villages every time we come out to these remote areas i always feel the sense of like wow imagine living out here we're so used to living in the busy cities we've just been in hanoi which is super crowded busy lots of motorbikes lots of people honking and then there's this i always think i don't know if i could live out here i think we're so used to being in the busy city having so much quiet seems strange to me so let me know which side you're on either you want to live in the busy city or you just want to be out in nature hello you might send for me no thank you oh you some water? water yes i've got some water in the backpack sue's what found did you find? this one this from the indigo. That's what you use as the dye to color. Yes, I dye to the color when oh, the water wow. I showed you. So we're gonna make some clothes right now. No. We're gonna make some dye. <laughs> so I just pour it on here. Yeah, you should pour it. Okay, that's enough. enough. Yes. Now you come in here. Who want to try? I'll try. You? I'm not scared. 
now you still make it like me okay let's see if i've got the maneuver yeah. right see she knows what to do okay like this is this right yeah yours is making a better sound than mine my stronger oh. <laughs> Yes. Okay. So you gotta kind of crush it. Yes. That's the idea. But slowly, much stronger. Slowly yes. but stronger. Yeah. Okay. And yes. then you have we'll get green later. It's no color but green. I'll have a green hand later. Yes. Oh wow. Now you keep your hand, eh? Don't clean. Kick like this. Wow. Five minutes. Five you, minutes only. Your hand will get green. Wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's so cool. Can... We're doing a little science experiment. You change color. We'll come later. Okay. If you look on here, you can see yeah, how it's yeah. running through. Oh my goodness. That shows you the dark green color. I didn't do the tips of my fingers. That's going to look funny. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you, Sue. You're welcome. It was nice to try it with you. Okay, less than five minutes. Devin's hands are already turning green. You're like our own Vietnamese Shrek. <laughs> yeah. Local man. Huh? Local man. Ah, yes, I'm a local now. You're a local. Like a local farmer. Yeah. <laughs> Got a green thumb. Green hand. <laughs> green hand. Look, Sue's hands are already yeah, green. Already green. Look at it your hand. Like no flat, just like green. <laughs> Look at your green hands. No green, way. Green hand like Whoa, crazy. And that's what they had in the big barrel. Yes. Was all the dye. <laughs> so this yes. is the second village yes. Sue was telling us, and a different tribe lives here. As for this village, we got almost three thousand people living together. As we've made our way all the way down the valley, there's some kids playing football behind us. I just love that simple life. But our guide Sue has said we have one more hour of trekking until we get to our homestay where we're spending the night. There's buffalo crossing the bridge. I don't want to get in their way. Hi, everybody. Look, they're full of mud. Yeah. They've been playing in the mud. <laughs> there's one lagging behind. Wait for me, I got little legs. Look at this one. Hello. Oh, it's okay. What a day. The sun has just gone down. It's not even 6 p.m. and we haven't made it to our homestay yet. But just a few more minutes. We're close to the river. I'm not sure if you can hear it behind me. Did we make it? We're almost there. The tribe that we're staying with lives by the river. And then there's another tribe that lives higher up in the mountains. We made it. My girl's completely pitch black. It is pitch black. We are Tavan Countryside Homestay. And we got some cute doggos here. So this is the village of Tavan. That's where we're staying. Hey, doggo. Hello. You're a little lady. <laughs> we made it. It's pitch black. Hello. 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 Nice, nice to, to meet, meet you. you. We have made it and we're already in the dining room area. What we're doing now is staying at a homestay. So this is a family's house. We're about to have a local dinner with the Zai tribe. Now our guide Sue is part of the Black Hamong tribe. She said that the Hamong tribe live up in the mountains and the Zai tribe live close to the river. Here's a river doggo. Hello river doggo. He's a Zai doggo. Oh, he's a Zai doggo. So we're eating what they're eating tonight. The way they prepare it, what they would normally eat, we're going to eat it. So this is a real special experience. <laughs> He's happy. He's sitting on my foot. Yeah. Okay, we're going to go and see what our room looks like. So this entire property is their house. Whoa. I guess this is going to be our room for the night. We've got two beds and I see we've got a little mosquito net here, even a curtain. And we've got a bathroom, we've got towels. Plus our room has a view of the river, which we obviously can't see right now. But I'm sure tomorrow morning it's going to be so cool. And this is it for the night. This is our homestay. And Sue has told us that everything they've made by hand, this is all of their craftsmanship. Let me. Here. <gasps> you try open? Whoa, how did you do that? You just squeeze? Just squeeze together. <gasps> yeah! It's coming. It's just... See? Mm. See, you like? Ooh. Mm -hmm. A really odd yet satisfying taste because yes. the texture doesn't look very good, but yeah. it actually tastes so good. It almost tastes like a kiwi 
but apple flavor. Huh? Just eat the inside. Yes, yeah. you just up on these. Oh my word, that is madness. I know, right? Sue's just picking them up from the tree. Yeah. <laughs> they look like um, mini star fruit. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Now you eat. Now we have a lot. Yeah. Okay, let's give you a quick kitchen tour or give you a brief idea of what we're doing here. This lovely lady, it's her place and she's cooking for us. And this is her setup. She's sitting on a tiny stool and then she's got a gas cooker hooked up also on the floor and she's cooking up some veg with chopsticks. We have no idea what we're gonna eat. So they're just preparing and cooking anything that they would normally eat and we just get to join them. Beef and we got some pineapple, carrots, onions. Yes. And we're gonna mix it with the beef yes. and garlic. Yeah. Together. Let me give you a quick kitchen tour. So we got some veggies there. We got a little stove with some condiments over there. Here's the gas stove. And then this is like where you can chop and serve. Once it's ready, you can plate over here. And then we've got all sorts of dishes on this side, pots and pans. And then this is the wash area. So you can wash dishes here. That's where she was cutting the meat. This is wow. so amazing. Thank you, Sue. What's that? Are you tired? No. <laughs> I'm eating banana. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers, my girl. We made it. We had a homestay in Vietnam. Been a dream of mine to be able to stay with a local family in a village or somewhere on our travels, and I only realize that right now that I'm getting to do that. I never thought I would be staying in a homestay, and here I am. We've trekked all the way up into the village, and now we're about to have a locally made dinner. Hey, Bo. Why do I feel like his name is Bo? He looks like a Bo. Wow. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Come in. This looks unbelievable. This is Banana flour, carrots. Chicken with carrot, tomato, carrot potato. and potatoes. Yeah. Mm. Oh, delicious. Sue's so serving us some rice. Uh, oh, this is pineapple and pineapple, carrots. Pineapple, carrots, Ooh, onion. Ooh, yum. Mm. Amazing. We're having a feast. This is a feast. Now you try eat local food. Huh? You know this, huh? <laughs> what, is that happy water? Yeah. Wow. Dancing, dancing. Yeah. <laughs> yes. When we need drink, when we drink, dancing, dancing. Thank you so much. Ooh, we are already starting. <laughs> okay. Happy trekking. Happy trekking. Cheers. Cheers. Nobody had the whole thing. You still have yours. <laughs> Drink all. Drink all. <laughs> you happy? Happy. I'm happy now. Okay. Cheers again. How do you say cheers in Vietnamese? Vietnamese? Mot hai bai zo. Mot hai bai zo. Mot hai bai zo. Mot hai bai zo. Oh! Free dream. Free dream. The spring rolls are so delicious. How can you say delicious in your local language? You say tanka. Tanka. Yeah. Tanka. Your language is different. So how can we say delicious in the Zai language? You actually heard. Van. 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 Okay. Easy. Okay. Easy. Some men, they stay here. Yes. They eat snake meat. They they like to eat snake? Yeah. Wow. This is some of the best food we've had. And you know what's even more special is the fact that it was homemade and cooked from the heart. And we've tried our way through all of these dishes. Oh, I'm absolutely exhausted. I don't think it came across on camera just how far we actually walked today. I just checked and we did over 20 kilometers of walking. But our room is situated right in front of the river. Today was like the most unbelievable day. It was so funny because my knees hurt a lot on the downhill. We started at 1,500 meters in Sapa. We've actually made our way down over 500 meters. And by the end, when we arrived at our homestay and it was pitch black, I was like, whoa like where are we right now <laughs> he's wrecked i'm tired oh. <sighs> he's still got green hands i still have green hands <laughs> Good morning.
morning from our cabin in the woods. We had the most incredible sleep. We have probably the best cabin we've ever stayed in because it's overlooking the river in the middle of the rice fields. We've got a beautiful little looking deck here. We've still got, I think, another five hours of trekking and then we're on a bus back to Hanoi. I'm still here, I'm still here. He's just so attached. He won't leave. Thank you again. Thank you. We'll see you next time. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. And we're off. Day two of our trekking. We're having to go straight up right now. Perfect weather today. It's going to be hot. I'm ready. Bring on day two. It's already off. Two seconds later. We're at a very steep incline, so it's already a tough start. When we were trekking yesterday, we were trekking towards the afternoon. Now that it's morning time, look how green it is. We're slowly making our way along the river. Plus we're walking by the little rice paddies and they're covered in water. And as we're walking through the village, everybody's starting to wake up and we get to see what normal life is like here in these tribes. Wow, what a view. This is bringing back a lot of Everest base camp memories of us trekking through the mountains. The terrain was completely different to this and because we were at high altitude we couldn't breathe so we were going a lot slower than this. Ah, I got Dave's absolutely right about the views. They are honestly like a postcard backdrop wherever you look. And we're so lucky to have such good weather today. You can just see the mountains clearly now. There's no fog, there's no mist. Very, very grateful. <laughs> Careful the chocolate. Chocolate everywhere. We're going up over there. So I guess we're trekkers now. Yeah, I guess so. We did Everest Base Camp once and now we think we're like ultimate trekkers. I love that we do these with zero training as well. We just pitch up. <laughs> also, it's so funny. I've been saying, oh, I'm ready for day two. It is only two days. <laughs> <laughs> I'm making it seem like it's a whole long expedition, but it's only two days. We're going back now. We started all the way down in the valley where Shev is. We're weaving our way around the mountain and we're gonna go all the way up there. Look how there's a plant growing through the poop. Isn't that insane? It shows no matter how tough the circumstances, you can persevere, you can go through any tough situation push through push through keep pushing just keep going <laughs> it's so crazy to go from this to this where it's completely quiet and there's nothing around us so we're walking through a completely natural bamboo forest the ground is so moist because there's no sunlight that penetrates through here and in here it's much cooler because moments ago we were actually sweating from the heat and the sun but the bamboo trees provide a lot of shade that's well and much needed this is insane Whoa. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> i knew that was gonna happen i just slide <laughs> Devin's chosen all of these trekking adventures, I'm sure you can tell. When is it my turn to choose something? We went to Disney for you, little princess. That's not enough. <laughs> I may seem like Devin's forced me on all of these adventures, but I absolutely love it. He's had to do a little bit convincing every now and again, but I'm loving every second of it. Coming. It's quite a slippery one. Ooh. There I go. We've now come down the mountain and this is the bridge that we need to cross before we start making our way up. Mm -hmm. 
bit tight, but this gives you an idea of where we were. That was the village that we started in this morning, right down in the valley by the river. And we've made our way all the way along here, then gone down back into the river and then come up. We've just seen this fruit now. And this is what we ate for dinner. This was in the salad that was sliced up with the carrot. And this is what the fruit looks like. I've never seen that before. What is that? It actually looks like a prickly pear. It's a bit of a butt fruit. <laughs> Looks like a butt, hey? Now we're finished. We get the car here to supper. Oh, we wow. finished already. Oh, I'm so sad. This is our car. This was one of the most unbelievable experiences I think we've ever had. Well done. Well done, Megan. Now we're going to head back into Sapa town, we're going to have some lunch and then we're going to take the six hour bus back to Hanoi. But that only starts the second part of this adventure. Good morning and welcome to Ninh Binh, the ancient capital of Vietnam. Yesterday we stayed overnight in our favorite hotel, Graceful Hotel, in the Old Quarter. And now we've taken a two-hour car to Ninh Binh. We are going to be exploring so much of the ancient history that Vietnam has to offer. Plus we're going to be taking a boat ride in the Tam Kok River. And we're going to be riding some bicycles, learning all about the history. Because there's over a thousand years of history here in Vietnam. So let's get started right now. We want to introduce you to our amazing guide, Mr. Kung. Hello. Hello, everyone. Yes, he's going to be explaining to us all of the history. He's going to be showing us around. Okay, let's start. So as you can see in the front of us, right there, we have one of the Tam Quan Gate, or we call Three Door Gate. We will visit two temples here. Wow. We have a Ding Temple and Le Temple, two of the great kings in Vietnam. We have a name of our capital, is Hoa Lu, and the name of the country thousand years ago. We call the name is Dai Go Viet. And this is one of the gates to the ancient city. Right at the top you can see two poles sticking out and that's where the first king of Vietnam is buried. So we're gonna go into the ancient town and see what the first capital is like. I'm sure you might see these outside many of the Vietnamese temples and the name of it is Ne. N G H E. I might be butchering the pronunciation, but basically it's the head of a dragon and the body of a dog. They pretty much guard the gates of the temple. After a brief visit to the temple, we had some really insightful information about the dynasties here in Vietnam. And actually, Ninh Binh was the ancient capital of Vietnam from the year 968 to the year 1010. Thanks to our lovely guide, we are getting some major insight into the history of Vietnam. You just have to come and experience it for yourself. If you're wondering how we're getting around Ninh Binh today, we're going to a whole bunch of places, but they are a little further away. So we're actually renting a car thanks to Vietnam Escape Tours. It has been amazing because they've organized absolutely everything for us. We didn't have to lift a finger or think about a single thing or do an inch of research. Thank you to Vietnam Tours for organizing absolutely everything for us. I'll leave a link to them in the description below. And now the activities begin with a bicycle ride. This is our bike. We're ready, we got a basket in the front. Right, we are on the bikes. Riding bicycles, ooh, wait. <laughs> Riding bicycles through these streets is just so awesome. Like what a unique experience. And I think it was raining earlier today. So everything is like a vibrant green. Just so cool, we're on bicycles. So the last time we were on bicycles, if you haven't watched, was in Taiwan and Sheva after five minutes crashed the bike <laughs> and cut her leg open. If you're sensitive to blood, I'm sorry. So we're going extra slow and extra careful this time. I'm doing way better this time. I'm a professional bike rider. Mr. Kung is leading the way. Wow, look at where we are. We're riding on the narrowest lanes with the limestone cliffs in front of us. Rice paddies on this side. So the nickname for Ninh Binh is Halong Bay on land, and you can see why. So you have all of these limestone cliffs jutting out of the ground, but no sea around it. So it looks like we're in Halong Bay, but on land. And to think that yesterday we were trekking and now we're biking. And this is our view. Look at these rice paddies with the limestone cliffs in the background. So to do this on a bicycle, you really get to feel what it's like in its pure serenity, unlike if you're on a motorbike where it would be loud. 
We've just stopped our bicycles now along this beautiful river and you can see people are riding in little rowboats and you can see that they still have like the traditional way of rowing the boats with their feet. You would think the river would be like a brown murky color but it's crystal clear. Just in the far distance over there, there's a beautiful temple on top of that mountain, which we're gonna go to tomorrow morning. What do you say when you're on the go again, my love? As we get back on the bike, we always say, back on bike. <laughs> <laughs> you look speedy. Yes, I'm at going at full speed, maximum speed, and I'm enjoying every second. And just like that, we are back. And this is where we're gonna have some lunch. Come on. Mushroom soup. Mushroom soup? Yes, and I'm dry. Oh, wow. Did you take soup? It was about a bit dry. And now we're about to have a full set menu for lunch. We're being really spoiled today because we've got mushroom and vegetable soup with puffed rice. It actually looks fried and stuck together. I think I could actually hold it up. It's puffed rice, which I think it's actually sticky rice that's been deep fried. Mmm. It's like a rice cr crispy treat. We are also having some banana flower salad and chicken, some grilled goat with onions and garlic, black pepper sautéed beef, fried chicken with cashew nuts. Wow, I don't know how we're going to finish all of this. The goat has arrived. We have been waiting to try this again because the first time we tried goat was in Vietnam, the first time we arrived. And now we are actually trying it in a different way. This is the goat meat and they were very generous with the heaps and heaps of garlic. I'm going to take a small bit of garlic and then I'm going to dunk it in the sauce. It's quite a tough but flavorful meat. It's super, super tender. I think the garlic and the onion is a fantastic combination. It's very rare that we eat goat, but when we do, we always enjoy it. That was a beautiful lunch. We are so full. But now we have arrived at the Tamcock River. We are about to go on a 90-minute boat ride through these beautiful meandering canals. Plus, we are going through three caves. I think this is going to be awesome because the guides who are going to be taking us are going to be rowing with the beautiful conical Vietnamese hats and they're going to be rowing with their feet. You can see how many boats are here. It just shows how popular it is. And then you've got the limestone rocks in the background. This is the river that we're going to go down. So we're going to hop on the boat now. Ông ông mới quay phim cho ông ấy ngồi trên. Perfect. Ông cho 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 xin cho bạn. Được được được, thoải mái. South Africa. Nice to meet you. What's your name? And just like that, we are off. We are on our own little private boat. This is our amazing captain for today. Yeah. His name is Cat. Cat the captain. We are going to be making our way through the little canals here of the river. One of the most touristy things we've ever done, but the most beautiful. And I can see why it's such a tourist attraction. Sometimes we feel like I just want to be a tourist and I just want to go explore all these amazing places. As we go under one of the bridges, it is so quiet, tranquil. All you can hear is the water hitting the boat. It's one of those moments when time feels like it's going in slow motion and you've got nothing else to do but just watch and enjoy. We're on the river, we're being paddled along, we're about to enter a cave. We've just got massive limestone cliffs in front of us. This is honestly one of the most breathtaking views we've had here in Vietnam. This is paradise. I'm having the best time. Another reason why I can understand they called this the Halong Bay on land because when we went to Halong Bay, they used these rowboats as well to get to the fishing villages. And now we've got the Halong Bay style mountains around us and they still have these boats. What's amazing for me is Ninh Binh is less than 100 kilometers away from Hanoi, which is the vibrant, busy city with loads of motorbikes. And just a short drive away, you get this natural beauty and you get the fresh air. You don't have all the fumes from the bikes. And there's lily pads lined along the way. Normally it's rice paddies on the water's edge, but because it's harvesting season, it's now lily fields and lily flowers because they grow in the wintertime. I just want to soak it up. I feel like we're so lucky to be 
be traveling northern Vietnam this time. Like we missed this last time. Can you believe that? We're entering a cave right now. I think there's actually one of eight, but today we're going to three of them. And it's just amazing to see these natural formations. It's actually a cave that goes straight through and the only way to get to the other side is in these boats on the river and it's all natural so we're going underneath the mountain right now. Unreal. <laughs> we're going in the limestone mountain. We're in it right now. <laughs> that was actually so awesome and if you're wondering why the peddlers pedal with their feet and not their hands is because during the day they have to go through so many caves so they pedal with their feet because sometimes they have to duck and they avoid getting injured that way and apparently they used to use their hands but to avoid injury they decided to use their feet and they've now mastered the skill and this way they can do the trip back to back all day long without their arms getting tired What are you about to do right now? So I've just asked if I can try row with my feet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's see how this goes. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> oh, captain's chair. I like it. So like this? Hands. Okay, we're going hands first. Oh, okay. I'm learning. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> so You're in the rice bed. <laughs> it is quite old. No. Ugh. Ooh. Okay, wait, wait. We're getting it. We're getting it. It is quite a oh. technique to do it. Is this good? <laughs> I don't think he's very good. Okay. How do I like this? How do I get out of? It's not as easy as it looks. No. <laughs> <laughs> Not very good. I'm not very good. It is such a technique and these <laughs> oars are so heavy. <laughs> there you go. Put get some that. strength into it. Oh. This is so hard. You keep going into the shrubs. <laughs> get yourself out. Okay. He's giving you a hum of disapproval. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I'm not doing a good job at all. No. You're full on in the rice paddies. I'm completely in the rice paddies and I'm doing a terrible job. Are you using full strength? I'm using all of my strength. To do. When they do it, it looks so effortless. Oh, you're getting guidance. I cannot tell you how tough it is. The oars are so heavy and the boat's heavy as well. I'm absolutely broken. I've gone for two minutes. <laughs> oh, I'm stuck. Okay, we have to swap. <laughs> you have to do it. He gave up <laughs> after two minutes. I've he... literally done two minutes. Ask him if you did a good job. Was that good? Oh. No, no, no. <laughs> He's just laughing at me. So we went from about that paddy to this paddy. We went about 20 meters, oh, honestly. No. It is so tough. It's difficult to show because they make it look so easy. Thank you so much. Come in. Thank you. If you watch all the boat captains, they're relaxing on the back. I have no idea how they do it. They are so strong. I was putting all of my force using my back and shoulders to push the oar. Oh, wow, I got humbled. You to shame. I got humbled. I will admit, I got put to shame. Thank you. Perfect. You go off first, Michael. Thank you. Come in. Good morning. It should be illegal to wake up this early, but it is 6.30 a.m. We have woken up bright and early because we are going to climb 500 steps to the highest point in Nimbin, which is a gorgeous little dragon statuette. So I'm not sure how long this is going to take us. And <laughs> three steps in and I'm already out of breath. But this is an awesome way to start the morning. Since it's our last day here in Nimbin, we thought, hey, let's hike up a mountain and go and see a viewpoint. Why not? And you can see how steep the stairs are. Doesn't seem like anybody else is up here, which is awesome. Also, we had the most incredible views from the ground yesterday. So I cannot wait to get to the top and see what it looks like from above. I'm feeling in good spirits this morning. We've been going on quite a whirlwind of a trip, but oh, I'm feeling energized. Let's do this, my girl. Let's do this. 500 steps. How long is that going to take us? 20 minutes. 
If you look just above us, that's where we're going. We have two viewpoints today. We're gonna to start and go to that pagoda first, and then there's one even higher than that. So over there is Hang Mua Eco Lodge. Now we stayed there last night and because we stayed there, which it's an amazing resort by the way, I highly recommend it. You actually have to walk through the entire resort to get to the viewpoint. Now because we stayed there, we get free entry into the viewpoint. So that's pretty cool. I'll leave a link to the hotel in the description. It's a really cool place. Now we get to the top. Woo, let's go. This is one of the most beautiful hikes up because you're just surrounded by the limestone rocks and it's just the most epic views all around us. And we're literally climbing in the rocks. You can see what all the mountains that jut out of the ground are made out of. We're gonna make it. We made it to our first viewpoint. We made it. Woo. Ah, viewpoint. Woohoo! Look at the view, ha! Huh? This is what we woke up for. And because we came early morning, there's absolutely nobody here. This is one of the highest points in Nenbin, but if I swing the camera around, this is where we're going to an even higher viewpoint. It actually wasn't as difficult as everyone made it seem. <laughs> this then gives you an idea of what we were talking about yesterday. You got all of these little mountains jutting out and then you got the beautiful rice paddies in between and we were cycling along all of these little roads. As we're walking to the second viewpoint, it's getting a little bit more tricky. We're literally on top of the mountain, so there's no more pathway. How did you get up here? Ah, I did it. Welcome to the highest point in Ninbin. Even though the hike up wasn't dangerous, climbing through that little dragon with those jaggedy edged rocks and there were some holes that we had to jump over, some chains that we had to grab onto, is really crazy. Gotta really watch a step as you go. The way they built this dragon, literally into the mountains, it's part of this rock right here. The view from up there is absolutely spectacular with the sun rising now. That's the river that we went down yesterday and now we're up here. We hope you enjoyed our journey through Sapa and Nimbin. And coming up on Shevendev, we take on a more luxury side of travel by spending an epic 72 hours on Halong Bay. And we take on Vietnam by motorbike, which is an epic three day adventure tackling over 300 kilometers of winding roads and epic views. Subscribe and you don't want to miss it. See you then.